Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be comparing the new M1 based entry level MacBook Air to a pair of Core i7 based Hackintosh laptops to see how they compare in terms of design and performance. On the left here I have the late 2020 MacBook Air. This is the base spec Apple M1 with 8 CPU cores, a 7 core GPU, 8GB of unified RAM and a 13.3 inch 2560x1600 display. Next to it in the middle is the Dell XPS 13. This is the 2019 model 9380 with an Intel Core i7-8565U CPU with 4 cores and 8 threads, Intel UHD 620 graphics, 16GB of DDR3 memory and a 13.3 inch 4K display. And finally on the right is the Lenovo Legion Wi-Fi 30. It has an Intel Core i7-8750H CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads, Intel UHD 630 graphics. It also has a discrete NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, but that's disabled since it doesn't work under macOS. 16GB of DDR4 RAM and a 15.6 inch 1080p display. Before looking at the performance, I want to talk a little bit about design and connectivity, beginning with the display. The screen on the MacBook Air is a 13.3 inch diagonal retina display with a native resolution of 2560 by 1600 in a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, giving a pixel density of 227 pixels per inch. This is a beautiful display with bright vibrant colours, excellent viewing angles and 400 nits maximum brightness. It has 113% coverage of the sRGB spectrum, making it perfect for video and photo editing. The XPS 13 also has a 13.3 inch screen, but with a full 4K UHD resolution of 3840x2160 in a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, giving a pixel density of 331 pixels per inch. It has the same maximum brightness of 400 nits as the MacBook Air, but a slightly lower sRGB coverage of 100%. It also has one feature that the MacBook Air, or any other Mac for that matter, doesn't have. It's a touchscreen. Now, the usefulness of touchscreens on laptops can be debated. I find them kind of uncomfortable and not particularly useful. But now that iPad and iPhone apps can run natively on the M1 Macs, they might actually make some sense. The Lenovo Legion Wi-Fi 30 has the lowest resolution screen of the three. It's only 1080p and measures 15.6 inches on the diagonal, giving a pixel density of just 142 pixels per inch. It's also the dimmest at just 250 nits brightness and covers only 64% of the sRGB color gamut. So it's not ideal for video or photo editing, but then this is a gaming laptop at heart. One thing that stands out when looking at these three laptops side by side is the bezels. The new MacBook Air's bezels are a lot thinner than the pre-2018 models, but when you see it side by side next to the other two laptops, they look a lot bigger. The XPS 13's tiny bezels allow it to have a much smaller footprint than the Mac, even though they share the same 13.3 inch screen size. The MacBook Air's trackpad is best in class and the keyboard is excellent now that Apple finally gave up on the horribly flawed butterfly switches. The XPS's keyboard is also very good and comfortable to type on though the trackpad isn't in the same class as Apple's. The keyboard on the Lenovo is a little mushy in comparison to the other two but still fairly pleasant to use while the trackpad is merely functional. All three laptops have backlit keyboards, the Lenovo being the brightest followed by the Dell and the Mac. Although the backlight on the Mac shines more through the actual letters on the top of the keys with little to no leakage through the sides, while the backlight on the other two illuminate the sides of the keys more than the top. For connectivity the MacBook Air gives you a headphone jack and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. The Dell also offers two Thunderbolt 3 ports, but there's an additional USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port and a micro SD card slot on the other side. The Mac allows you to connect a single 4K display at 60Hz, while you can connect two 4K displays on the Dell. 
The Lenovo offers a full array of ports including Gigabit Ethernet, 3 USB 3.1 Type-A, 1 USB C 3.1 Gen 1, DisplayPort and HDMI. However, the DisplayPort and HDMI ports don't work under macOS since they're connected to the disabled NVIDIA GPU. This means that there's no way to connect the Wi-Fi 30 to an external display under macOS. Now let's move on to performance. Starting with some CPU benchmarks, in Geekbench 5, the M1 in the MacBook Air absolutely demolishes the other two laptops. In single core it's about twice as fast as the two Core i7s, and in multi-core it's over three times faster than the quad core i7 in the Dell, and about 50% faster than the six core i7 in the Lenovo. In the Geekbench Compute benchmarks the difference is even more apparent. In the OpenCL test the MacBook Air is about 4 times faster and in the Metal test it's about 4.5 times faster. Next the Cinebench R23 benchmark. In Cinebench the single core performance is about 80% faster than the Dell's quad core i7 and it's 50% faster than the Lenovo. In the multi-core test, while the MacBook Air is about three times faster than the Dell XPS 13, the i7 8750H in the Lenovo closes the gap to only about 15%. However, during the benchmark, the Mac is completely silent, while the Lenovo sounds a little like a jet engine. Moving on to video editing performance in Final Cut Pro, the first test I ran was the Bruce X 5K benchmark. With background rendering turned off, exporting to ProRes 422, the MacBook Air took 19.2 seconds to export the project. That was about 3.5 times faster than the Lenovo and 4 times faster than the Dell XPS. For the next test, I set Final Cut Pro to stop playback when a frame was dropped. Then I tried adding multiple simultaneous layers of 4K video, one on top of the other with transparency set to 50%, to see how many streams each laptop could handle before it began to drop frames. The Dell started dropping frames after 11 layers, the Lenovo managed 12 and the MacBook Air was able to play back 39 simultaneous layers of 4K video before it started to drop frames. Next, still in Final Cut Pro, I timed how long it would take each laptop to export a Cinema 4K project, 8 minutes and 47 seconds long, with colour grading, transitions, titles and music. Exporting to H.264, the Dell XPS took 10 minutes and 50 seconds. The Lenovo strangely took longer, at 11 minutes and 8 seconds, despite having an additional 2 cores over the Dell while the MacBook Air took 7 minutes and 53 seconds. Switching the export codec from H.264 to ProRes 422, the results were very different. The Dell XPS was now slowest at 10 minutes and 20 seconds, the Lenovo Legion took 7 minutes and 41 seconds, while the MacBook Air took just 3 minutes and 1 second. For the next test I used the most recent beta version of Handbrake from GitHub. This is a universal binary so it runs natively on both ARM and Intel. I transcoded the ProRes 422 video, exported during the previous test, to 1080p H.264 and H.265. And the results show the first sign that perhaps the M1 isn't completely invincible. In the H.265 encoding test, the Core i7 8750H in the Lenovo was about 30% faster than the M1 in the MacBook Air, which itself was about 60% faster than the i7-8565U in the Dell. In the H.264 encoding test, the Lenovo won again, although the MacBook Air closed the gap somewhat, being only about 15% slower this time. The Dell brought up the rear again, at over two times slower than the MacBook Air, and two and a half times slower than the Lenovo. Moving on to the graphics performance, in the Unigine Valley benchmark at the ultra detail level in 1080p, and with anti-aliasing off, the MacBook Air managed 44.2 frames per second, which was almost four and a half times faster than the 10 frames per second from the Lenovo, and over six times faster than the Dell XPS. And finally, to end with World of Warcraft. 
the first game to run natively on Apple Silicon, with graphics set to the maximum detail level of 10 and VSync turned off. At 1440x900 resolution, the MacBook Air manages to maintain a frame rate of around 60 frames per second. I had to run the other two laptops at a slightly higher 1600x900 resolution due to their 16 to 9 screens, but the Dell barely managed 10 frames per second on average, and the Lenovo averaged around 13. So, with the sole exception of the handbrake test, the entry-level MacBook Air vastly outperforms the two Hackintoshes in every area, even though those laptops have high-end mobile CPUs and twice the amount of RAM. I thought that having 16GB of RAM in the two Hackintoshes, compared to only 8GB in the MacBook Air, might give them some advantage, but that turned out not to be the case at all. I've been using Hackintoshes now for almost 10 years, and almost exclusively for the last 3 years, for the simple reason that they offered far better performance than a Mac of similar cost. But this switch to the new Apple Silicon has turned that completely on its head. Now you could spend thousands on a top of the line Windows laptop, install macOS, and it would still be beaten by a $999 or €1100 MacBook Air. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.